Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to walk through an example that kind of shows how to use arrays, formatted output, conditional logic, all of the components we've talked about so far. But mostly we're focusing on arrays. Arrays are our new topic. So here I have three little questions here. First, and, and they're not all related. First we want to prompt the user to enter four name values and then print those names in alphabetical order. And let's just focus on this first little um, question first. To get started I'm going to make sure that I put my little cheat at the end of my console app that pauses the screen so that we can see the results. So console.write, press any key to exit and then a console.read key. Console.read key will pause the, the console screen so that we can see the results and allow the user to decide when they are ready to close the console app. All right, prompt the user to enter four names and then print those names in alphabetical order. Well, name values are just basic string values, so we can build some basic string prompts, but we need to do this four times. So I'm, I wanna think, maybe I wanna use a loop to do this. And then I need to print all the names in alphabetical order. Well, if I want to get user input and then store that user input so that I can use it later, I need some type of data structure to store those values. And because I know how many names are being entered, I can use a, an array data structure. An array is a fixed size data structure. And so let's go ahead and build that array. So syntax to build an array would look like something like this. We will create a string array type. I'm going to name this my names array. And set it equal to a new uh, string array size 4. Now I could just declare four string variables here to hold four names. But if I change this problem to say enter 40 names or 40,000 names, um, my logic below will be the same, except I just adjust the size of storage I need. So using an array to store multiple values is a, an efficient, uh, easy to program solution here. Okay, so we've created storage for four names. Now it's time to fill that array. So we need to, to fill the array. I'm going to set up a loop that looks something like this. Four int i is equal to zero i is less than names array dot length i plus plus. What I have done here is I'm building a simple counter control loop that is, is tied to the available indexes in my names array. The reason I'm not just putting the value 4 here is because if I needed to change this problem to be 40 or 40,000 I don't want to have to manually change all my connections to this array uh, with this length number. Instead, I can just take the length of that array to tie my, to, to set my end bounds of this counter control loop. And then if I change this from four to 40, my array that is filling the, my loop that's filling the array will adjust accordingly. Okay. Inside this loop right here, whenever I take my array name, names array, and, and reference it based on an index, this index counter i, I am setting up a way to, to iterate or, or access every single location in the array one at a time. Now if I wanted to print that result or sum the result, I might do something like console.write, and I could, I could print the value that's in this array. And I want to do that, but not yet. First thing I want to do is fill or assign values into this array. So that's going to be an equal sign. Equal assign is how I assign a value into the array. Well, what am I going to assign into the array? Well, the user needs to give me a name. So inside this loop, I'm going to first prompt for a name. I'm going to say console.write, enter a name. And then we will save that name value into some string variable. How about string name is equal to console.readline. Now I have the user input stored in a variable, and I can assign that variable's value into my array. Now if I wanted to say enter a name 1, enter a name 2, if I wanted to add a counter to my output, I have a counter set up already, i. But i starts from 0 and goes to 3, and I would like 
you, humans like to count from one to four. So if I wanted to put a placeholder, a counter here, I could put a little placeholder. And if I insert i, if I print i each time, I'm going to print 0 to 3. But if I print i plus 1, I'm going to take my index for my array and print it as human countable numbers. 1, 2, 3 instead of 0, 1, 2. All right, so now we've filled the array. We've prompted the user for an input, stored that input into our array. If I want to print in alphabetical order, I need to sort this array. And, in a, and, to, and to sort the array, I can use the array class, array class, that has a sort method, and just pass in my array that I want to sort. And that's all we need to do. Now the sort method in the array class will modify the values in this array. It's, it's physically shuffling those values, but now that's good to go. We've sorted the array, now it's time to print out the results. Now I could print out the results using this for loop. I can set up the exact same for loop, for int i is equal to zero, i is less than names array dot length, i plus plus. This is a cookie cutter for loop, it always will work. And if I want to print each name, I would say console dot write line, create a little placeholder here, and I'm going to insert my names array at index i. Again, when I'm looping by index, names array at index i is how I access each element in the array one at a time. When i is 0, I'm accessing the 0th index, or the first value. When i is 1, I access the 1th index, or the 1th value. So here I'm printing the sorted names. And we will put a little console.write line print sorted names by index just so we can see those results. And then I want to show you we can also, when we are reading values out of an array, I can also use the for each syntax. This is going to be looping over our array by value. Now, here we're going to say print each name. Uh, by looping by value, which is a read only loop syntax. So let's say console.write line print sorted names by value. This syntax will look something like this for each. Well, my names array contains string values, so the way I'm going to set up this, this for each loop is for each string name in my names array, I'm going to console.write line that each name. So let's compare these two loops for a second. Here I am looping by index, so I am accessing each element in my names array by its index, by its location. You could think of it as I'm grabbing each name based on the address of where that name is stored. With the for each syntax, I am looping, I am grabbing each value that is inside the array, storing it in this temporary variable, and then using the value. When we when we use a for each loop, we are really just grabbing a copy of the data and and and, manip and printing a copy of the data. Whereas when we loop by index, I'm, I'm getting the actual location where the data exists. So when I loop by index, I can modify it, like I'm doing above, or, or print it. When I loop by value, I can only grab a copy and then do something with the copy. I can't change that array value. Let's print these results and see what it looks, looks like. All right, so we're going to enter in some names. It says enter name one. I will say Omar, Zeb, Anna, and Mark. And we see that whether I loop by index or value, after I sorted the array, we see the names being printed in alphabetical order. All right, let's look at question two. We'll put some spaces in between. Console.write line. Put a couple new lines here. Prompt the user to enter six quiz grades. We're going to assume each grade is based out of 15 points, but any integer value we're going to we will accept right now. And after each quiz grade is entered, I want to just print 
all the quiz grades and, the, and then print the sum of the quiz grades. Now, because I want to enter all the grades first and then print all the grades, I need to save these six quiz grades so that I can use them later. If I want to save multiple values, I want to think about an array or a list. And in this case, since I know how many grades are coming in, I can use an array. So I'm going to do exactly the same steps as I did above. Build the array, fill the array, then I can iterate over and do something with that data. So we're going to do those same steps, but with integer values this time. So first we will build the array. This is going to be an integer array. I'm going to call this my grades array and set it equal to a new integer array size 6. Now if I needed to enter in 60 grades or 60,000 grades, the only thing that changes is the size of this array setup. Everything below that I'm about to uh, uh, implement will scale accordingly. So now it's time to fill the array. And I'm going to build a counter controlled loop for int i is equal to 0, i is less than grades array dot length i plus plus. I'm setting up this loop the exact same way as I set up the loop to loop over each element in the names array. We're doing exactly the same thing. Now what do I want to do inside this loop? Well I want to prompt for a grade and then I want to assign that grade into the list or into the array. Sorry. And If I look up here this is exactly the same two steps that I did above. I'm prompted for a name and we assigned the name into the array. Alright, let's make this happen. To prompt for a grade, a grade is a numeric value, and so numeric inputs take a little bit more work because we could we could tell the user to enter a grade, but they could enter some string value like ABC, which I can't convert to an integer value. So we need to read in the, the user input, try to convert it into an integer, and if it fails, we're going to try again. We're going to reprompt the user to say, "Give me try again. That was a bad grade. So let's set that up. And there, in a previous video, we should have covered building protected numeric prompts. So more information can be found there. To prompt for a grade, I need a variable to hold the grade. And I need a Boolean variable that I'm going to name parse OK that's, that is going to hold the status on whether we were able to parse the user input into a number or not. Now I'm going to build my initial prompt. I'm going to say console.write enter a grade. And if I want to enter in the which grade we are on, like grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, I will insert my i plus 1 index value. So enter a grade and then we are going to read it in. And that syntax might look like this. parse ok is equal to int dot try parse console.readline and we're going to store that result into this grade variable. I'm going to read in what the user typed. I'm going to try to convert what the user entered into, a, into an integer value and store the result into my grade variable. And if that parse, if that conversion succeeds, try parse returns a true value. If it fails, it returns a false value. So we need to handle the false case. So I will say while parse OK is not equal to true or we can say while the parse fails, I want to reprompt. And reprompting will be another console.write. I will say invalid grade, try again. And then we will do the parse OK line again. Parse OK is equal to int.tryparse, console.readline, stick the result into my grade variable. Now, what I've built here is just one protected numeric prompt. I can't get past this while loop until I have a valid integer in my grade variable. So then I, after I get past the while loop, I can just put that grade variable into my array. So grades array at index i is how I assign, how I access every element inside the array. And I'm going to assign into that the whatever grade was entered. When in my loop, when i is 0, 
I'm assigning that first user input into the grades array at index 0. I'm putting that grade into the first available location. Then i is going to increment, i will be 1. I'm going to reprompt and get a second grade and put that second grade into the 1th location of my array, or the next available, and so on. And because we set this loop up to be tied to the length of the array above, we will loop ex exactly as many times as we need to fill this array with values. Now we wanted to, after all the grades had been entered, we want to print them out. So let's print, the, print each grade. Well, I can loop by index again, like so. Oops, or like, like this. Or I could loop by value. Both of these will work. I'm going to go ahead and loop by index. Let's just focus on looping by index right now. So I'm going to say 4 int i is equal to 0. i is less than my grades array dot length i plus plus. Exactly the same loop as above. First we are looping over the array to fill it up. Now I'm looping over the array to do something with all those values that have been entered. Well, if I want to print each grade, I could say console.writeLine. We'll put a little placeholder out of 15 points and insert my grades array at index i. Inside this, this loop, when you loop by index, grades array at index i always represents each value in the array, one at a time. So inside, when I'm looping over my grades array by index, Grades array at index i represents each grade one at a time. So I not only want to print each grade, but I wanted to find the sum, the sum of all these grades. So if I want to find a sum, sum each grade, I need an accumulator variable. Accumulators are initialized before the loop in which they are accumulated. So here's my for loop I'm going to accumulate inside. I want to add all the grades inside this loop. So before the loop, I need to initialize my accumulator. So each of these grades is an integer, so I'm going to say int sum of the grades is equal to 0. Declaring, initializing this variable before we get into the loop. Inside the loop, I want to add each grade. This is a sum operation. So I'm going to say sum of the grades is equal to the previous sum of the grades plus grades array at index i, because grades array at index i is how I access each grade one at a time. So each time through the loop, loop I'm going to grab the current grade that's stored in the array, add it to my previous sum, and there you go. Now there is shortcut syntax here where I could say sum grades plus equals grades array at index i. Typically this is how the uh, programmers would probably write the syntax. We're adding this grade value into my sum, but these two lines of code are exactly equivalent. Now outside the loop I can print the results. I can say console.writeLine uh, total grade is, we'll insert our placeholder, this will be out of 90 points because six grades at 15 points each is 90 points and I'm going to put my sum grades value. Let's test it. So here we will enter our four names. Now we'll get to the grades. All right, so I'm going to say first grade was a 15, then a 14, 13, a 9, an 8, and another 15. And I've once I've entered in those five grades, I've stored the, the results into my array, looped through the array, printed each of those values, and then found the sum, and printed the sum. Now the last thing we are doing is saying based on this, the sum, or based on this, the, the total grades being entered, I want to find the average, and then spit out a letter grade. This is just going to be some conditional logic. Well, the, let's figure out what the grade percentage is at first. So I'm going to say double grade percent is equal to, it's going to be the sum of the grades that was entered divided by 90. And then that, that will give us the percent amount. And then I want to make sure I multiply that by 100. So I, I can get it, I can turn the 0.79 into a 79%. 
Now sum of the grades is an integer value. 90 is an integer value. So if I take an int integer divided by an integer, I get in trouble. I, I lose precision. So I either need to do something like this, where I say I divide that sum by the double value, 90.0, to preserve precision. Or I can go up here and I can cast my sum of the grades as a double. I need to make sure that this cast is next to the variable I'm casting. If I put this double outside of this statement, then this integer division will lose precision and then that, lo that loss of precision value will be converted to a double. So I don't want to do that. I want to convert my sum grades integer variable. I want to, to um, convert that to a double in this, for th in this equation. Okay, once I have my grade percentage calcula calculated, I should be able to just build a little conditional logic statement to, to determine whether it's an, it falls into the A range or B range or so on. And that might look like this. We'll, we will say if grade percent is greater than equal to 90, well, that's an A. So I'm going to say console.writeLine. We will say a grade of this many percent uh, earns a an a and I will insert my grade percent value else if that grade percent is greater than equal to 80 and that grade percent is less than 90 so here's our next our B range then we are going to print out that they made a B. Earns a B, and we're going to just kind of follow this pattern through each of our ranges. If the grade percentage is greater than or equal to 70 and less than 80, then they earn a C. Whoops. And then we'll just keep on going here. If it's between 60 and 70, they earn a D. And then finally, the else case in this conditional logic says they, that the user did not get at least a 60. All of the above conditions have failed, and so we will earn an F. Sad day. All right. So we calculated the the grade percentage and then built some conditional logic that is just testing some conditions and if any of the whichever of these conditions matches that's the output we will get let's test it out here enter some grades or some names enter grade we will start with 15 and then 14 and then 13 and then 9 then 8 and then another 15 we see here that the average was an 82.22 and the student earned a B Let's test it one more time. All right, we'll get past our name example. We're gonna, we're gonna do very good on our quizzes this time. User got a 95.56 and earned an A. Really, we should test every single one of these grade conditions, but I'll test one more. The, this student will make very poor grades. One good one, we'll see how it, it kind of wraps up. 56.67 earns an F. All right. In summary of this video, whenever we need to input values or store multiple values so that we can use them later, we want to use consider using an array.